All right, I'm here with Mike Parker, the announcer of the Oregon State baseball, football, and basketball program, as well as the Corvallis Knights most recently right now. And um, we are going to start with the question of how did your passion for sports evolve? Well, seven years old, like uh, listening, uh, was playing with a friend, uh, walked into his garage, and his dad, Stewart's dad, was doing some work in his garage, and I'd never heard of sports really at all, but he was listening to a game on the radio, and I didn't even know what it was, but I asked, I said, well, what exactly are you listening to, Mr. Holland? And he said, oh, it's the Dodgers. It's baseball. I said, what are the Dodgers? You know, what's baseball? I knew nothing. And then he tried to explain baseball, and I realized I was thinking of something else, actually. I said, no, not, not so much what. Who is that talking? Who, who's that person? And he said, well, that's Vin Scully. And so at the age of seven, I, I was kind of drawn in by the radio and the great announcer, Vin Scully, calling a baseball game. That fascinated me, just hearing his voice, hearing something coming out of the box. And it was baseball. And from that day on, I fell in love with baseball on the radio and then football on the radio and then basketball on the radio. And I've watched some games on TV, too. There's nothing wrong with that. But it was radio that drew me in when I was seven years old, and I've kind of been in love with it ever since. That's awesome to hear. And so uh, when you're covering all these different sports, you cover a wide variety. Does your approach to the game change based on different sports? Every sport's different. You know, baseball was my first love and the first thing that kind of brought me into the whole world of sport and its beauty and the passion involved in it and the high drama that can involve. In all three sports, you can get some amazing moments and experiences. With Oregon State baseball, I've had the privilege of calling three national championship games and those amazing runs in Omaha. Nothing quite like that in my broadcast experience, but football, I've seen great victories in the rivalry series. It used to be called the Civil War, the Beavers defeating the University of Oregon in some big games and winning a game in the Fiesta Bowl and uh, some high drama across the way at Reeser Stadium with exciting finishes, block punts, return kickoffs for touchdowns, pick sixes, goal line stands. Some great players through the years I've had the pleasure of calling in the Pac-10 and the Pac-12 era. In basketball, most recently, the Beavers going to the uh, Elite Eight in the tournament in Indianapolis, getting to call those games in person even during the COVID year. Uh, every game has its own rhythm, its own storylines, type of pace you've got to get into. With basketball, it's really fast with yeah, a lot of uh, action in a hurry, pass over to the left wing and a little low post, back at the top of the key to Ethan Thompson, two pass dribble to the right, throws it out to Zach Reichel, 22 footer in and out, no good. Rebound to Arif Aletisha, lays it back up, no good, but he's fouled. He'll go to the line and shoot too, where you're trying to cover a lot of things quickly. Football has more of a formulaic type of sound where you're setting the field and the formations and the defense on every play. Baseball has a lot more, at times, more kind of slower time and time to talk and tell stories between pitches or reminisce and look back over previous eras or plays. So I think you have to be adaptable to the rhythm of each game, but each sport does have its distinct rhythm and ways of, of preparing, and I think you have to be versatile with all three. Of course, that, that's great to hear. And as you mentioned earlier, those three national championships, there's nothing quite like it. And so what? just take me through the feeling during those moments of each call. Yeah, you, you, you really, I don't know if I, I don't think too much about who or how many people might be listening, but I do know that in those national championship moments, calling those Beaver baseball victories in Omaha, that whoever is listening must really care and care deeply and passionately. And so you just feel like, I mean, I just feel like it's a privilege to get to try to convey through uh, the inflection in the voice, through different rhythms, through my own emotion and passion at times coming through the four in some of those moments, but just trying to 
to be the eyes and to be the person on the microphone trying to, to convey as much as possible what it feels like to be here in these grand moments. It's a privilege to get to do that, and I know the people that are listening truly care, and it's been an honor, a privilege to get to call those three different championships, as well as just you know all of the Beaver baseball games over the last 23 years when there's such a invested, interested, passionate fan base. You know that what you're saying, everybody's kind of leaning in on. And I remember that just from my own experience as a listener. When Chick Hearn or Vin Scully or Dick Enberg or the people that I grew up listening to, I was riveted on just about every pitch or shot or free throw or, or punt or punt return or block punt to save a game. I mean, I, I've gone through those emotions myself as a young boy and a young man and into my adulthood, listening to what the announcers are saying and feeling, you know, with the good ones, I feel like they kind of draw me in. And I'm hoping that I can try to create that same sense that, hey, this is, we're all in this together. And that's what I try to convey in those moments and those championships that you allude to. There's been nothing quite like those. Of course. And over those past 23 years, you have covered some pretty high caliber talent from Brandon Cooks, Jaquiz Rogers, Michael Conforto and Jacoby Ellsbury. Just what has it been like to see those players evolve from Oregon State and college to successful professional careers? It's really one of the joys of the job is getting to follow all of the people, the people you just referred to and many others through the years where you get to see them come in as, a, as true freshmen, redshirt freshmen in some cases, and then watch the arc of their careers at Oregon State, but then to go on and watch them continue to excel at the major league level or in the NFL or in the NBA or whatever the case may be. And I, I follow all of the former Beavers closely. Every major league box score that I look at every day has to do with how did the, my, my, how did our Beaver guys do? I stay in touch with a lot of those guys. Uh, really have that's one of the favorite parts of the job is being able to follow these guys on and whatever they do in representing Oregon State so well. Yes, and one final question, Mike, is you're a six-time Oregon Sportscaster of the Year. What an accomplishment that has been. And so what do those accomplishments mean to you? Well, that, that's a, a vote of, of your peers. So whenever... Whenever that's come my way, it hasn't for quite a long time, so I may be losing something off, off the fastball. I don't know. But that, I, 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 you're right, and thank you for asking that. Uh, each time it means a great deal because you're being voted on by uh, other writers and broadcasters in, in the profession. So I'm humbled and grateful to, to have ever been recognized by my peers in that way. But whether I'd ever won that or not, I do know that getting to do what I do at Oregon State was a dream of mine that I mentioned earlier, going into Mr. Holland's garage at the age of seven and discovering sports on the radio, to have been able to, to call these games the last 23 years in all three of those sports that I fell in love with on the radio, to get to be a radio announcer all these years and call all of these games for this great university. Whether there was ever any recognition or award or not, the, the reward, the award is just getting to do it year by year. And I hope I get to keep doing it for a long time. Well, we appreciate you very much, Mike Parker. And uh, thank you for doing this interview. And I look forward to listening to you on the radio the rest of the summer and into the Oregon State Athletic year. Thank you, Blake. And I look forward to watching you and, and seeing you someday. You're off to a great start, and, and this is a wonderful opportunity that the broadcast school has provided you. The Walter Cronkite School, no greater journalist than him. So I'm glad you're getting to experience this, and it's been an honor to be a part of it. Thank you.